five, one, okay? I'm just filling in my doubling circuits. You can see now already that there's never any break. Uh, let's try another doubling circuit. Let's see, I've got, I know here I'm gonna have a negative eight. So here's my negative five, okay? I'm gonna count one, two, positive seven. One, two, so this is gonna be a negative eight. One, two, this is gonna be a positive, positive four. One, two, negative two is already there, okay? So you can see clearly, I hope, that I'm making doubling circuits around this. Let's just fill the rest in. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, six, five, four, sorry, I'm writing upside down, three, two, and I could still fill in my doubling circuit here. I've got two, one, five, seven, eight, four, okay? It always works any way that you do it, okay? So what, the, what I'm showing here now is that spires are not what they're really modeling, just like everything else, are overlapping doubling circuits. Well, I shouldn't say overlapping, but interconnected doubling circuits. So let me show you again on this torus, where it might be easier to see. Here's my positive eight. Next blue one, following that line, negative seven. Positive five. Negative one. Okay, uh, positive two. Let's try another one. Let's say here's a positive five. Okay, negative one. Positive two. Let's go the other way. So we got positive five, so it should be a negative seven. That's exactly what it is. Negative seven. Positive eight. Okay, interlaced doubling circuit. So I, I challenge and promise everyone, go and try it on your own. That's what's going on here. What we need for these coils, if the quantized numerical torus is correct, are inter, are multiple circuits, all firing in a sequence, okay, which I can't explain, uh, though it's too complicated for right here. Uh, we want to get it on 3D visuals. I'm inviting people who are working on the coils. If you want to work with me, you can contact me. Um, I would like to try and develop designs, more designs, I already have some, based on this modeling. So now I'm going to show you, um, I'll show you some other ways you can approach it. Um, just so you can see. Uh, one way you can do this is on a flat piece of paper, just like I did the old-fashioned way by hand. Uh, take you a little while. Each of these quadrants that I'm showing here, this would be one, two, three, four, five, six. Each of those quadrants is a nine by nine, okay? I'm claiming that that's the smallest possible torus you can make, uh, a nine by nine. By linking those tor smaller toruses together, you can make larger groups, and there's a pattern to how the circuits change, but no matter how many circuits you have, no matter how many doubling patterns you have, they always connect back to themselves, they're always unbroken, you always have unbroken multiplication tables, and your nested vortices sequences never change. I don't ever have to move a number. I can just add more and more in, and the pattern always works. The other thing is, no matter what combination of numbers, I always have unbroken doubling circuit spires all the way around the torus, and it's one sequence that comes in, comes back out, around many, many times, depending on how many numbers you have here. Here's another sheet. This is showing where I filled in the nested vortices sequence numbers. If you look closely at this, or if you do it yourself, you'll find that it's the same number pattern in every single quadrant. Doesn't matter. You can keep adding, I shouldn't really call them quadrants, but I don't know what else to call them, squares. 
you can keep adding squares in and you never have to move any numbers so I could draw this square fill in its numbers and I could add one over here same numbers never breaks here so it never alters the sequence and you always have spires connecting you can work it out on your own find out for yourself just to take it a step further so that you know I do my homework I did it in a higher base system for those of you who worked in the really complicated stuff of this and I'm about to read you off the numbers for these this is base 26 okay it's the next step up from a base 10 or modular 9 this is base 26. This is what the torus skin looks like for a base 26. There's actually four circuits instead of two and one gap space. Okay? They're mirror imaging each other. They also have a sequence to their vortices and how they work. I can now, I've written out that sequence and I can now prove and show what that sequence is. Still not one interconnected circuit. It's multiple interlaced circuits depending on how many of these squares. So whereas I showed you one square is a 9 by 9, this is one square of a 25 by 25. Okay, so let me now read to you the numbers. If I haven't lost everybody already, I'm just trying to get this out there so that people, if you want, you can contact me on it. I'm not kidding about the work that I'm saying. This completely changes the picture of vortex-based mathematics. Uh, one thing I should show you before I read out the numbers I never did say, in that case, the original winding pattern, this star shape that goes all around, well, what is it modeling? Well, I'll show you. When you're talking about a 1, or let's just start with a, let's start with an 8. We're just doing family number group, so it doesn't matter. This 8, whereas the winding sequence would carry it down, what is it really modeling, okay? So here I go, 8, 6, 7, 7, um, Here's my 5, okay? The 8's connecting to this 5 on the same blue spiral. And then it's this 2 here. So the, the pattern of the spires is actually going here, here, in family number groups. Then I go to my next 8, which is 180 degrees across. So in other words, by the sequencing of the nested vortices, I am preserving the same pattern of the original winding of the coil. The difference is, whereas this coil is being wound, really what I consider in a two-dimensional fashion, it's flat in other words, uh, even though it's winding around a donut, it's not actually winding correctly. Because when in my winding pattern, instead of having a straight line coming here, mine would curve around, crossing these other numbers, but the family number groups aren't all the same distance from the center. Just like in our symbol where we've got one out here, one in the middle, and one close to the inside, when you model them according to spires, that's exactly what you have too. One out here on the outside, one in the middle, and one on the inside. All triangulated in the same pattern. So with my winding pattern, I wouldn't come straight up over the surface of the torus in order to shoot back at another angle. I would have a much more gradual curve that connected to this number down towards the base, down here on the same doubling circuit. Then when it gets to this number, it's up here so that I preserve this S curve along the winding of the coil. This is super important. It's not being done right now with the current winding. This S curve is not preserved. So my winding would come around at an angle. It would cross here, come back around, Again, crossing the family number groups, but at different distances from the center, going inside, back around, and connecting right at 180 degrees across. Okay? I hope you followed me on that. All right, let me read you out just to round some of this off. Um, you can contact me, by the way, my email, which is tricky, T R I C K Y, underscore gnosis g-n-o-s-i-s at yahoo.com you can write me I'm willing to work with people on building coils I'm making a large claim about this I'm inviting everyone to dissect my work okay and I'll be the first one happy at the pie eating ceremony if